Good morning. Welcome to Clydesdale Homestead. I'm Harold Clyde. Today is April the 29th and we're in spring here in northern Idaho. Today I'm going to uh, show you a bee feeder that we're going to put out. We installed some packages of bees two weeks ago and we are going to put out a, a mass group feeder for them today. So the bee feeder works on the same principle as your chicken waterers, that is air pressure holds the food into it. So you need a level pad to put it on. Here I've taken a couple of bricks and I've leveled them out so that my bee food doesn't just run on the ground and run out on me. This is my mass bee feeder. Uh, it's homemade, made it myself. You can buy commercial versions of this, but it's really easy to make. It is a five gallon bucket and a lid and they have to seal really well together. As you can see, this five gallon bucket has nice deep reservoirs here in this area. That's what you're looking for in your bucket. You need deep reservoirs. And in the inside of the bucket, we drill holes in the, into the bottom of each of these reservoirs. Make sure you don't go through the outside of the reservoir. You're only drilling from the inside of the bucket to the inside of the reservoir. You don't want to break this outside, otherwise all your food will drain out. Here's another view. Again, you want deep reservoirs with your hole drilled from the inside of the bucket to the inside of the reservoir. You don't want to break this outside seal. So your food will sit here in this little cavity. You may have to shop around a little bit to find a bucket that you like, or you may have to try several buckets. The lid just needs to be a tight sealing lid. Make sure you have a good rubber gasket in here. Because again, if you leak air into your bucket, all your food will drain out before the bees can get it. As for the location of where you should put your bee feeder, don't put it in your apiary. Mass bee feeders can sometimes cause the, the bees to rob if the feeder runs out. So you don't want your bee feeder near your hives in case it runs out or in case it starts the bees in a, in a robbing mode. So here we have bees up on top of the hill over there. We have a few over here. But 20 or 30 yards away, I've set up an area where I will put my bee feeder. It's plenty far away from my hives so that uh, my, my hives that are the closest hives to them won't uh, be in danger of being robbed. Over there is where we're putting the <laughs> Yes. Now for the secret formula. We have white sugar. Please do not feed your bees Splenda, um, brown sugar, unrefined sugar. You want white sugar. The ratio here in the spring is 50% uh, water, 50% sugar by weight. So we're going to put in 25 pounds of sugar and we're going to put in 25 pounds of water. Really fun thing about water is water is 8.3 pounds per gallon, which means three gallons of water weighs 24.9 pounds. And I'm just using the hottest tap water that I can get out of my sink. As you can see, 25 pounds of sugar really fills up this five gallon bucket. When we put the water in though, that sugar will collapse and it will end up with about four, four and a half gallons of total syrup. Hot water, hottest water I can get out of the tap. So to mix up five gallons of sugar water, you're going to need a mixer. I prefer the drill and paint stirrer method. Uh, you can do it by hand, but this works really well. The last ingredient I'm going to put in, this is optional, is a little pro help. Uh, this is a commercial version that I purchased. You can make this yourself. Its ingredients are just uh, sugar, water, spearmint oil, lemongrass, thymol, and lethicin. The spearmint oil, lemongrass lemon oil 
and thymol all come in an oil base. And so they put the, a little lecithin in there to act as an emulsifier to, to get it to dissolve into the water. The ratios are here on the bottle. And that is for 50 gallons of finished feed, uh, you need 32 ounces or one liter of Pro Health. Um, I'm not making 50 gallons, but I worked that out that if you're making a gallon, it's one tablespoon plus one teaspoon to one gallon of 50 50 sugar water to water. In this case, I'm going to use a quarter of a cup in my five gallons of syrup. And we'll just go ahead and rinse off our cup in the syrup water. So there's a lot of foam here, but as you can see, our sugar is getting mixed in. And you can almost see to the bottom of the bucket at this point in the mixing. The reason why you use hot water is it helps the sugar go into solution faster. You can use cold water, but you may be mixing longer or mixing repeatedly. So I'm here, I'm at my feeder location. I told you it was really full. Well, there's about four and a half gallons of syrup in there. That's 25 pounds of sugar, 25 pounds of water. I still have about a half a gallon I'd like to mix in, but we're already up to the holes that I've made. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump this extra water in. I'm gonna seal my lid on tight, and I'm gonna turn the whole thing over on my feeder. A little bit of that water may wash out, but that's okay. There was plenty there for the bees, and then we're gonna wait for the bees to come. As you can see, it's starting to come out my holes. I'm going to seal my lid, snap it on there tight all the way around. A little bit's going to leak out as the air pressure, as the negative pressure develops up here in the top. As soon as that negative pressure develops, that leaking will stop. Well, that's about it on our bee feeder. Thanks for watching. If you like our channel, please subscribe. As an added bonus, we wanted to show you our, our large, western larch or tamarack is just starting to come out and, and needle out. So it really is spring here. See you next time.